Hello everyone and Trisha, it's me Jenny and it's time for another Not Naked Video Response Trisha has read a series Naked Truth where we talk as candidly and as truthfully as possible about the subject of her choosing straight out the shower, no makeup, wet hair, it's really wet today, I'm dripping everywhere um, straight out the shower, no makeup, first take, one take and so on and so forth most people choose to do it naked, I choose not to but either way it's not a sexy time thing, it's a vulnerable and honest thing it's a tool for the vlogger to be open and honest and feel uncomfortable um, and yeah, um, just as a pre-warning, I have a cold, I have a cold sore, I'm not a pretty looking person right now, not that I'm usually, but there we go, um, so apologies for the husky voice, and as my throat clears it might sort itself out, I don't know, <coughs> probably not, um, and also this video is probably going to be late because my laptop is in the shop right now, because it is very very broken, hopefully it'll be fixed, um, so sorry this is late, um, so yeah. Uh, today's Naked Truth topic um, is, do you feel comfortable talking about sex? Um, and to be honest, I do, generally. Um, I'm never ever going to go into specifics of my love life on the internet. In the same, for the same reason that I don't do these videos naked, um, it's not an equal relationship. Um, like, if I was having a one-to-one -one discussion with Trisha, then it would be an equal relationship but as this is an open video that anyone can see um, and I there's a few that I have left unlisted but most of my naked truths are public um, it's not an equal relationship um, when you can talk to someone and they can talk to you and you know it's just between the two of you that is one thing when you can you know confer that that's an equal relationship then that's a great thing but I am talking to the world right now theoretically um, and they don't need to know when and where I had my first time or my second time and with whom and details that is not something that I would feel confident sharing with the world because that's not something I would share um, and again not an equal relationship um, when it comes to body confidence I've said it before I have been to my fair share of nature speeches in my life and I have partaken of that activity of being naked in public and that is an equal relationship where you can you know be naked in public and everyone else is naked and it's nothing because it's just is um, so yeah I don't feel confident in talking about details of sex on the internet but I will you know, the anatomy and the A's to B's and the general etiquette of it, I'm absolutely confident talking about on the internet because I feel like it does need to be vocalised. Um, and I feel like I had a, a pretty good education overall on the matter. Um, I think in secondary school from year 11, from year 7 onwards, so when you're 11 years old, we did basic education and that was, you know, separated by genders for the first, I think until we were about 13. So the girls would go off and they would talk about periods and managing themselves and um, all of those sort of things and the boys would presumably talk about dealing with their issues during the early start of puberty um, and how to deal with that sort of thing. Um, obviously I wasn't taken into those ones but there we go. Um, and then every year we'd have a kind of rehashing and a developing of those things um, including you know condoms and bananas and that sort of thing so you get to excuse the pun get to grips with the concept um, and you know talking about the risks of different types of intercourse and different types of um, intimacy um, and that also we did social kind of as part of that we did social studies so we understood things about different gender relations, different sexualities, all those sort of things um, and that was just the A's to B's of it in school on top of that we had biology as a subject where you learned about reproduction you learned about you know the developing human body as they go from you know pre-fetal to developing in puberty um, so yeah, like I felt like I had a very good basic knowledge of physical anatomy. Um, on top of that, my parents, like I adore my parents, I think they're one of the two best people on the planet, um, but they were also very open and very honest about sex and sexuality and all those sort of things. Um, like I know in their heart of hearts, I'm sure in their heart of hearts, they would love me to bring home a, you know, heterosexual a partner and get married in church, but there, I think they would be actually horrified if I were to consent to an engagement without having intimacy with that person. I think they would be horrified by the concept of that, um, because for some couples, I'm sure it is possible to have a happy, 
a romantic relationship without intercourse, but for the most part it is an essential part of it. Um, and I think they would feel very uncomfortable if I were to consent to spend my life with someone whom I didn't know if we were compatible in that way, or able to discuss it. Um, yeah. Um, on top of that, like, I think it's one of those things that um, I'm sure for other people, well, this wasn't the case, but because I was always so informed about it and so aware of it, um, you know, I never had the experiment, experiment, let's, I have no idea what I'm doing, let's do this, or the, you know, the um, stress of being like, it's denied, oh, I've got to do it because I can be a rebel. Um, you know, I'm very, very sure that my parents would have been pretty happy if I, like, and knowing me and respecting me as a teenager, as an adult, I think they would have been very, very happy with me going out and then coming home and talking to them about it if, you know, whenever that situation were to occur, I think they would have been very happy with that um, because they knew that I would have talked to them about it. Um, and when it comes to talking, like, to the internet, as I said, I don't discuss anything, like, any details or anything, but I am so lucky to have two sisters who are approximately the same age as me, one of them is the same age as me, um, who, you know, we all have a very similar mentality. We've all, we've grown up together in a house of mostly girls, um, we've shared baths as a kid, we've camped together, we've, we all know what we've got, we all know how we deal with certain aspects of our life emotionally and physically, um, and we do discuss details, you know, we'll have those discussions and yes, sometimes it might involve a little bit of alcohol or sometimes it might just involve us getting, a, like, awkward pauses or, you know, all of those sort of things but I've had discussions with my sisters which are do you want to talk about this? If you want to talk about it, it's absolutely fine, we'll talk about it. If you don't want to talk about it, well, that's not. And yes, sometimes those discussions have been embarrassing and intimate but I always know that I have those two people in my life to call, who no matter what I'm going through, I can talk to them about anything. Um, I mean, it helps that one of them's a doctor, but you know, that is there. Um, similarly, I have one best friend in the world who is amazing, who I've known my entire life, who has a, a much wider experience in life in certain aspects than I do, and I know I can talk to her about those things. Um, similarly, I have some other friends who are more recent acquaintances and more recent friends, but I feel that given the right circumstances and depending on the subject matter, I could talk to them about things that make me feel very uncomfortable in detail, is as necessary, and if it does get too awkward, we can walk away and it won't affect our relationship negatively. Um, when it comes to my parents, I feel like I would go to my sisters first with most intimate issues, but my mum is a previ she was a nurse, so you know, if I'm feeling uncomfortable in that physical sense, I can go to her, um, and I feel like I can discuss most things with her. Um, when it comes to my dad, um, I wouldn't necessarily go to him, but if I know if I was in a crisis, if I so I don't know something bad happened. Um, which it hasn't, ever. I've been very lucky in that aspect. Um, but if I was in a crisis and my sisters weren't picking up and my mum was out of the house and I couldn't get in contact with her at all and the only person I had to talk to was my dad, I 100% know that he would be there for me. Um, he grew up with two sisters and he produced three daughters. So he knows a lot more than a lot of men do <laughs> about women in general, um, and bless him, he suffered through a lot, and I will always have sympathy for that poor man, but I know that if, if ever something was stressing me out and I couldn't talk to my sisters, or my friend, or my mum, I could talk to him. Um, and I'm so happy in that confidence. Um, and, you know, I think, again, going back to a very early stage, I can remember my mum talking me through, like, I think I had an upset stomach, and talking me through where things were so I knew how to look after myself properly when I was quite young. Um, and I also remember having the discussions about, like, if you go out into the world and you get pregnant and you're under a certain age, that is fine. Like, depending on what you want to do, we'll talk through it. If you feel like you can't handle that physical responsibility, we will go through it. If you feel like you can and you want to stay at home and live at home, we will help you raise that child if that is what you need. And I can remember that discussion, I remember the that details of it. I can't remember how old I was. I was probably 
early teens. Um, I probably came home from school one day after having a um, a class uh, where we were discussing things like that um, in one of the uh, education days um, and said, you know, some of my friends say that they'd get kicked out of the house if they were pregnant and I'm sure they just reassured me. Again, I'm sure in their hearts they want me to bring home a nice man who I'd, you know, get engaged and all those sort of things and build a healthy relationship. But I think they would be, again, horrified if I agreed to marry someone I hadn't lived with or agreed to marry someone that I hadn't been intimate with. Uh, I think that would shock them more than coming home pregnant um, or coming home um, in any other sort of distress. Um, yeah. That was a very long video. <coughs> um, yeah, I think that's it. I think I've been very, very lucky. Very lucky in that way. And again, because of that education, I feel completely in control of my own sexuality. I feel like I know how to handle myself in a lot of situations um, and you know where to draw the line and I think as Trisha was saying in her video if you don't feel confident with the consequences you shouldn't be having sex I'd say if you don't feel like you can talk about the situation to your partner you should not be having sex if you can't say the word penis or vagina without giggling and you can't like concept the idea of talking about their sexual history with them you shouldn't be having sex with them. Um, and, you know, a lot of the time, you know, you just... If it's exciting and you're in the moment and you just go on with it and then at the end you're like, we didn't discuss this beforehand, talk to them afterwards. That's absolutely fine. Um, and again, it's more complicated with things like one-night stands. Um, but then that is your responsibility as someone who is able to make that choice to be a, you know, consenting adult... It is your choice to then take responsibility for your own care and well-being. It is, again, it is the job of you in a relationship to have that conversation or to control the scenario. So if that involves protection, which it should, um, it is not, it is your job to do it. And that is speaking to both boys and girls. You know, regardless of whom you are having sex with, regardless of if it's heterosexual, non-heterosexual, polygamous, anything... It is your responsibility to make sure you are safe and if possible and ideally you should also be thinking of whether or not your partner is safe um you know don't just think of yourself think of your partner um and i said before in one of the other sexual topics for the naked truth um sex should be sloppy and messy and fun and it's awkward it's meant to be awkward um but i can almost pretty much guarantee that it's less awkward and more fun if you actually feel comfortable with your partner. Guarantee that. Um, and a lot of that comfort comes from knowing their sexual history and knowing that you're both in it for the same reasons. That is an uncomfortable term of phrase. <laughs> um, but there we go. I've talked way too much for someone who doesn't have a whole lot to say. Um, but there we go. Thank you for watching. Feel free to comment. Um, as I said, this video is going to be late, so I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching, and bye for now.